um, moving from our local file and pushing that up to the the server uh, on your GitHub account. I'll just show you how that works. And ideally, before the end of the day, if if at least a few of you guys are um, following along, we can stop at any time if you're working in real time and uh, we can problem solve. I can help you. I know Joe can help you. Peter Nagimbal can help you. Um, um, some of the data science master students that have GitHub web pages can probably also help. So we have plenty of people to pair off and give help today. Um, but I'll demonstrate how to edit it, how easy it is. But there's also, if you haven't done this before, uh, I'll, I'll also illustrate and try to emphasize the way of thinking here, because it is a little bit different than just having files on your local computer. There are some things that may be mysterious <laughs> for you, which I'm not going to tell you about whatsoever except the absolute bare bones. And that's GitHub, which is a, a big, mysterious, very powerful tool in itself. Why do we use GitHub? We use GitHub if we have a collection of files that comprise some kind of prob a problem or project that we have. For us, for me, I might use it <clears throat> if I'm collaborating with something on a data analysis that involves one or more data sets and one or more sets of script files or programming files could be in R, could be in Python, could be in any programming language. Git doesn't care. It just organizes files so that people can share them. Or even if it's a complicated project that I have and I kind of want to archive it on the and maybe share it with others, could be a website, could be teaching materials, or could be an actual a big analysis project. I might put that on GitHub to maintain the integrity of the content of my files, but I could still share it on. The other thing I'm not really going to talk about today, which we have talked about in here before, is markdown language. There are a lot of ways to make websites these days. Um, HTML is a is a language, hypertext markup language. You could write natively and have a um, just in HTML and have a GitHub web web page. The way that I'm going to do it is the one that I'm most familiar and comfortable with is to write in plain Markdown, not R Markdown. R has its own version of Markdown. I actually don't prefer that to plain old Markdown. That's my favorite. It's just so easy. R Markdown is also very easy and I like it, but I'm going to use plain Markdown, not R Markdown today. Um, .R files, we can share them and have them on a web page. I'm not going to use those today. We're going to use plain Markdown to with our studio to generate HTML files and it's HTML files that we access through our web browser. So we're not going to actually write any HTML today. We're going to purely use um, Markdown. So the first thing you want to do, can, can I just get an indication in the chat of uh, who intends to work with me in real time today, if anyone? Just put a Y in chat if there are people that want to work in real time. Yep, at least one person, couple people. OK, great. Well, the um, there are a few people that is most excellent. I'll assume that you people have downloaded this template zip file and have unzipped it to a folder. And I'll show you what mine looks like right now. now this could be anywhere in your in your computer. Um, this is the zip. And uh, when you unzip it, you should have the folder called web page files and you should have a folder called files, a folder called uh, IMG for images, an index.html file, and an index.md file, which is our markdown file. Inside the files folder, I've got a, a single file that's called sum underscore data dot text, which is just a very simple data file. And in the image file, I have a just a little picture that I've picked. OK. So the first thing to do is just to uh, unzip this, make a folder on your computer that you're going to work from today and unzip that stuff uh, in your folder. Now, um, before I go even to the next slide, I'm just going to show you what this. What this template looks like. <clears throat> <coughs> in our studio. 
So uh, it's called index.md. Now for this particular tutorial, the easiest method of making a GitHub page, it has to be called index.md. And then we don't have to do anything else. We just call it index.md. A really brief blast is up here um, between these dashes is what is called the uh, YAML YAML header. YAML is just kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a, like a web programmer's joke of a name. It's an acronym that stands for YAML ain't markup language. <clears throat> uh, and in it, it's just, it acts as a header with just a little bit of information with an exception that uh, the, the title is actually a, um, a bit of a data field and uh, it acts, it's acted on when this page is compiled. So uh, whatever you put in quotes here is the literal title of your web page. Whatever you put in the author data field in the YAML header is the, uh, will be, will be uh, labeled as the author of the page. And the date is functional as well. <clears throat> All of the rest of this is just code. And you can see there's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom out just for a second. If I zoom out and make it small like this, um, and I delete those extra lines, this is the entire code for the whole for the whole thing. And uh, what I have is uh, a couple of fields. This is the particular code that is used to um, link to a picture. So this little bit uh, within the square braces is a bit that um, that uh, that would list as a um, as a, um, a a text underneath the picture to indicate what it is, and this in the round brackets is the uh, path to the actual picture that you have on your local file. So for me, it's uh, and for us, for this example, in the IMG is jack.png. And so I've got um, the local path from where this uh, this markdown folder is. I'll just make it big again so we can oops. We can see uh, just indicate the folder with a forward slash um, being on Windows and uh, the name of the file. No quotations or anything are needed there. This ampersands.nbsp uh, semicolon is a, is a crazy symbol, and all it means is make a hard, spa a hard return uh, after that picture. In Markdown, um, you can just ignore this for now. You can learn Markdown later when you edit this page on your own, but uh, whatever's after this hash, is uh, there's one hash symbol here, and that means that this is going to be a um, top level title uh, level section header. Two means it's a level two header, three hashes means it's a level three header, and so forth. Uh, I've just put in some placeholder text. If you've seen The Shining, you'll recognize this. Uh, another space, another hard return. And then I've, I've just put a, a caption here and a link to that data file. And uh, the way that this works, if you've got this open in RStudio with me, all you have to do is hit preview. And um, what's happening down here in the R Markdown tab is that it's compiling our web page. Now, this is just a local HTML file, and it, it compiles it to look like this. So we have um, the title, the author, the date. It renders the picture and the caption. It renders the level one title and the text. And it renders the sentence and the link to the data set, which I can open and I can just view the. It's just a comma separated values text file for that. So if I close that and I go back to my um, to my local file, what I want to do is let's just do an experiment, me and you, is that uh, I'm going to delete this HTML file. So I only have the markdown file. 
I'm going to change the title up here. Change it to anything. I'm going to just change it literally to my title. And I'm just going to um, save it and hit preview again to compile that HTML. Now remember, I don't have the HTML file in my folder anymore. So we're just going to make a new one. So let's preview it. <clears throat> so I'm going to give everybody just a minute to delete that HTML and just to compile it afresh. And, uh, and just confirm back that they've made a new HTML file timestamped 418 p.m. Just give everybody a minute to do that and just confirm everybody's with me up to this point. Okay, getting some people done. The unzipping part and assuming everybody's got our studio in should be straightforward. I'm going to give it another 30 seconds and then I'll ask if anybody wants me to wait longer before we go on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start easing into the next few slides. So if anybody wants me to stop at this point, just just put a little nudge in the chat and I'm happy to, to stop and um, wait and take everybody with us today. Now, the second thing we need to do, and this may take people a little bit to come along, uh, especially if you've just this second installed GitHub desktop, but uh, th this is an important component to uh, to follow along to have a website up and live within an hour. Now, GitHub Desktop is a local um, piece of software. Th this is literally a picture of my GitHub Desktop, and this is this is my GitHub Desktop. So it's just a small piece of software to navigate around here. You have a few fields. This field in the upper right that is all blank right now. It shows zero changed files right now. I do have a current repository in mine uh, open. So we have a little tab. I have some other repositories on other GitHub accounts. Um, it's got something called the current branch here. It's got something called fetch origin, which I don't want to click right now. And it's got a pane here on the right that um, is telling me there are no local changes to, to files in this repository that I have opened right here. And down here is a little place where I can add information to any sets of changes that I, that I do to any file in this whole repository. So uh, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make a new repository. Now I've assumed a few things here. Um, if you go up to file and make new repository, um, you'll get a little pop-up window like here. And uh, what I'll invite you to do, if you really are new to this and you really want to follow along, don't click anything until um, until you make sure that you've read the final instruction that says click it. Because <laughs> we'll need to fill in a few of these things um, <coughs> quite carefully. <clears throat> So the first little bit would be to make a new repository. If you haven't logged in, it may invite you to log in and you have to log in in the web page. So if you've just made a new account or if you made an account a little while ago, you may need to log in. So the first one is to, to click make a new repository for everything in GitHub desktop. You can access GitHub through the command line. Um, I'm guessing there aren't many people who just want to love to use the command line without some practice in GitHub. I myself 
like using GitHub Desktop. I've become addicted to it because it's so fun and easy. But uh, even though it's a piece of graphical user information uh, interface software, it's got a lot of nice little sh shortcuts and control plus in is the shortcut that I would use to make a new repository. So go ahead and create that repository. <clears throat> this is an important part of, um, of things. I'm going to just zoom in on this slide a little bit. For the name in your repository, um, I've put a symbol of, of what um, the repository name should be. It should be your username for your GitHub account, dot github dot io and uh, the name of this github account that uh, whoops that i'm using for this example is ha dash data dash science uh, is the name of the github account so whatever you've named your github account you would name this new repository ha dash uh, data dash science replace that part with your account name. Can can somebody give me an example of the account name for their GitHub account here in the chat? Yeah, for George for Georgie uh, Gina Anna, it would be exactly like you've put it, but without the square braces. See, there aren't any square braces in the way that it is down here. So make sure and don't put the square braces. For cryptic crawly, it would be cryptic crawly dot github dot io. <clears throat> For Iona, it would be exactly like you have it. If your um, username is i y wang, yep. So that that's the idea. No um, <clears throat> no um, square brackets. And uh, a neat thing about this name that we're going to put in the uh, repository here is this is actually going to become the URL that we're going to be able to use to directly view our website. It's what you would put on your signature in your email, on your staff page, and probably it's also what you'd put on for your website in your own GitHub repository. Okay, so now this is just the top part of the uh, create a new repository, so don't click create repository yet <laughs> we have to do another step um so the the next thing that we need to do is we need to take a look at this um <clears throat> local path and so um i'm going to just come back to the next slide here now um into this local path you want to uh enter some existing path now uh, i want to i want to be clear about this and this is a potentially confusing part if you're following along oh how do you find the name hold on before we go on let's go back if you go to um your github account and you have your uh, if you have your uh, github account that you've made the uh, part right up at the uh, top up here is the name of your account and it, it's also listed on your profile there and it will also be listed in the confirmation email that, that you were sent. So all you need is up is to have your GitHub page up and it's it's just the name the base name of your account. <clears throat> and it has to be complete. Okay, great. Okay, so now here's a, here's an important point here, as I was saying, that is a point of confusion. And I, I don't want there to be any confusion. I have already asked you if you're following along to uh, unzip that um, that template set of files 
to a place on your computer. And mine, mine looks like this here. So if I if I go up here, I've made a a location on my computer inside our Herig my local Herig file. <clears throat> I've downloaded this zip, and I've, uh, if I look inside the zip, there's a folder in there with some files, right? And I've unzipped that whole folder right here in my in my computer. So I've got that sitting on my computer right there. This thing has nothing to do with that folder that I just showed you on my computer. This is completely different. So what I would like you to do now is to make a second place on your computer. And, and for me, um, that second place looks like this, where um, I've got in my Dropbox one called git dash HADS for Harper Adams Data Science. And I've made a I've made a new location where my GitHub, my active GitHub files are going to live. It's different from this. So I have both of these on my computer. So let's forget this one where you've unzipped that zip file. Make a new empty folder now. You can call it anything you wish. You might just call it Git or you might call it um, um, projects or Git projects. Can't be any spaces. So if there, there's some spaces, different words, put a dash in there. Mine is git dash hads. So yours will not, your folder that you make will not have a, a folder in it like mine does. So ignore this. <clears throat> and you'll need to make a, um, a place on your computer. So in my Dropbox folder, I've made this folder git dash hads. <clears throat> yours won't have anything in it. So uh, what you do in Windows is you just click in the window up here, and uh, that place where you want a folder created, we have to let um, we have to um, let GitHub do its thing, GitHub Desktop do its work for us. We're just going to put the folder where we want that repository to live, and repository is sort of the language that GitHub Desktop uses that means a folder with all the files that belong to some project in it, like this website. <clears throat> so this is separate to where you unzip that original one. Just want to make sure that's perfectly clear because it is a point of confusion. <clears throat> the way that people would design this, um, too, if you're confused about thinking about this, is uh, you usually have all your GitHub-based projects. I mean, so you, you could have them all over your computer. That will not do in my world. I will want them all right in the same folder with names that I understand. So I made a special folder for it. But it could be technically any folder on your computer. OK. So uh, once you've got that, then it's time to uh, hit Create Repository and to create the repository. Now, once once you do hit that, this um, there will be a folder that appears in your in your new GitHub directory that has the name of your account dot GitHub dot IO, just like you put in the um, the name of the repository in the in the web form or in the uh, GitHub desktop form. OK. Any questions up to now? Any concerns? Sweet. We're all on the same page here. OK. <clears throat> OK, good. All right, so um, so now remember we have the um, we have these two folders on our computer. So you've uh, inside the web page files folder, you can just open that up and you can actually just open up the folder you've made on your computer and you're just going to copy my template files, all the folders, all the files, and you're just going to paste them inside this folder over here. And so they, it should look like this that I'm selecting the files in on your computer after you're finished. 
you should leave in the dot get attributes file and in addition to that it should have all the files and folders so just copy them over right now so far so good all fine it's looking good give everybody just a moment to achieve that Now don't worry yet about customizing your web page. We'll do that at the end. Uh, we're just getting this template in place. And then if you've got um, your research account ready to go, I'll show you how to edit that in just a few minutes. But for now, we're just getting the web page up. Okay. <clears throat> just yell if I'm going too fast and I'm happy to stop and solve problems as we go. We have plenty of time. So, um, so now, if you're following straight along with your GitHub desktop, and I'm, I'm going to illustrate this a little bit on my own computer. It won't look exactly like this on my computer. I'm going to cancel the creation of that. Um, what yours might look like is uh, this is the picture I took earlier. Here it's set up because I've just made this repository. It's automatically loaded up that new repository on GitHub Desktop. And I've added some new files over there. And essentially what GitHub Desktop does when you load a repository is it watches that uh, space, that local space on your computer for changes. And there was nothing in the folder and we added some files and folders to the folder that was being watched. And the job of this is to uh, tell us what the changes are. Over here on the right, um, we have a little tab that tells us what the changes are, how many changes there were. Uh, and then down below, it shows us the location of the changes. And this tool over here, um, you notice that the top file here is gray, it's selected. Sometimes if it's appropriate, um, over here on the right, we get an actual account of what the changes are. So I'll just illustrate this on my computer real quick. I don't have any changes at the moment, but I, I do have this folder right here. And I'm just going to open up the in this local folder, my markdown file. And I'm just going to um, I'm going to do two things. One in now now I'm not in the template folder anymore. Now I'm in my watched GitHub folder. Notice how I have a separate file. They both have the same name because they're different files with the same name. I'm just going to close the old one so there's no confusion here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to like change the author name. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to hit preview to generate an HTML. And now the author's name has been changed. And uh, if I go to my GitHub desktop, the whole point of this was to um, show that it, it highlights the changes that have just been made. So I've got an index. And over here, I can see that the index was changed from author Ed Harris to author Jack Nicholson. Uh, and so forth, and in the markdown as well. So both the HT, the new HTML I generated and the markdown are marked up here because they've both been changed. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for just a second. I just wanted to illustrate how that works. So the next thing that um, <clears throat> we wanna think about here is, well, what is actually happening? And, um, Right now, because you've added those those files to your local folder, we've highlighted those changes, and we have to go through a few steps to actually change them in the cloud in GitHub. <clears throat> and this is called uh, committing. So if you make a change and you want to document that change, uh, it's like you're freezing a snapshot of that folder that's being watched. It's called making a commit. Now, in practice, um, if you're a um, somebody like me, I might make a lot of commits. Uh, it, there's no cost to making them other than your time to push a few buttons. If you're a pro coder, um, you know you might you might do more coding. 
you might write for an hour before you make a commit. It just it just depends on how how often you want to save. And uh, I also want to say here that um, Git is not like uh, Microsoft Word in the sense that you can do a lot of undos and uh, go back, although you do have a history of all your commits. So you can always go back to a um, one of your previous commits, any one of them at any time. You have to do a little work to do that, but it's not like Microsoft Word in the sense that it's not as user friendly. So for me, I want to avoid having to roll back to different commits. So one thing we have to do here is we have to make a commit to freeze our changes. The changes that you have is to put that template in place. And uh, when you do that, um, you have to provide a summary of what's been changed. <clears throat> so you could put any text in here that you want. I've, I've put the text update test. The description is, um, is optional. But uh, you know, if you're working on a project, oftentimes if you've made a, a significant change, you want to document what you've done. It just helps you later, or somebody you might be collaborating with, but mostly you, later. So uh, you have to put in a summary of what you're committing, what change has been made, and it's optional to put in a description. So go ahead and and do that now. Put in some. Um, description of the update you've made, like uh, initialized template or first template run. You can put in a description if you wish, just to see how it looks. Um, you know, so it might look like this. And when you have at least the uh, summary put in, go ahead and hit the commit to main. So I'll show you what that looks like on my computer, I'm going to go ahead and commit to main and we just have a little bit happening here. Now, now what we've hap what we've done here now is we've. Some changes have been made to that folder that, that we've done nothing on the web yet. We've only changed our local folder because we told GitHub desktop to watch that local folder. When we committed, we asked um, GitHub desktop to to grab a record of the changes made to the folder with our commit. And the next thing we want to do is we want to tell GitHub on the web that we've changed, made some local changes. That's the whole point of this. And that's the beauty and automation of, of all this. So um, <clears throat> a few things to note before we go on is uh, one, there should be um, a, in the history tab, there should be something new and you can actually click on it and see it. And we can see an account of the history of the changes we've made. Let's just go ahead and click back on changes, though. You can explore this later. The real thing that we want to do now is we want to publish our repository to the GitHub web website. And so we that's called pushing our files from the local repository that's being watched up to the virtual GitHub repository. So uh, you can go ahead and hit it, hit publish repository. I'll just show you what it looks like on mine. Um, I, I've already published this repository on mine, so I'm just going to equivalently now I'm going to hit push to origin. So we have a little bit of what's going on up here. Some stuff has happened. And now there are no more local changes. It's great. Something has happened. What has happened? Well, what you can do is you can go up and um, you can go to your GitHub web page and you can go to your repositories page. It's just a tab up at the top. Now, GitHub as a website doesn't act like a, a website that most of us will be used to. It uh, has a specific function in saving changes to groups of files related to data analysis and programming. And in our repositories tab, you may have lots of repositories one day. Um, but in this sort of example account, I've just got this one today. And so we can click on it. <clears throat> and what we can see is a list of all the files and we can examine all the files and we can download all the files if we wanted to. And it's just got exactly the same files 
as our local watched directory. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'll pull that over there so that we can see a couple of the things that I want to show you. So um, one of the things, you know, right now on my computer, it says it's 443, and it says that we've updated these two files three minutes ago. And I updated these, you know, at some point earlier today when I was making sure it all still worked. <laughs> so um, that's what happens on the website. So if you're following along, that's what you should see, something like that. Uh, so um, when you get to uh, this page, if you've already clicked through this, it's OK. We can go and fix it later. But uh, it's, in, it's easiest to untick, keep this code private at this stage. Um, and if you've put a description in there, um, untick, keep the code private. We want it to be public. We want to share the web page with others before you, uh, you smash it. I forgot to say that because I had already published this earlier and I didn't get this this warning. So if you if you haven't unticked that, it's okay. We can change it on GitHub in a second. Now, <clears throat> um, a thing we kind of want to do is we want to look at the settings of the page. We want to let GitHub know that this is a web page. <clears throat> you can only have one web page like this. I think on GitHub, I think that's true that you can only have one of these. Um, they have made some changes to GitHub over the last couple of years, and I, I haven't totally gone crazy with using GitHub as a web page. Um, I was seduced into the much more complicated web page world a few ago. Uh, it is slick, but it's more complicated, and I just haven't played with GitHub very much. But um, go ahead and navigate, if you're following along with this, to your repository and click on the settings link. I'll do I'll do it on mine if you're following if you're not following along. So just inside your repository page, there's this settings tab. And I've just clicked on it, and this is what the settings tab looks like. So there are all sorts of tabs over here, and you have quite a lot of power with this. Now this is the web version of your of your um, repository. And if you make a change to the web version, it won't change the local version. It will only change the, the web version. So if you change the name of the web version, um, it, or you deleted a file or something, it's not going to change your local version. It's important to keep that distinction in mind. What we're going to do here, though, is um, we're going to look at um, some specific settings. So if you go down to the Pages section, this is where we tell um, GitHub. I see a hand. Anna, go on. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, so I've, I've used, used GitHub before, um, but it, sorry, is that is that me doing the echo? Um, so I used the repository before. Uh, I but I used all the the web browser, so I never used the desktop. So I've got a few. Uh, I've got a repository already prepared on the web page. How do I get that into the to the desktop? Oh, sorry. Am I muted? Oh. I think uh, I think Ed's muted. Ah, uh, Ed is. Ah, yeah, Ed is muted. Sorry. I, I, did you hear what I said? So, I did, yeah. I oh, did. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. <clears throat> um, yeah, you can do that, Anna. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what it looks like here, but if you um, if you come up here and you add local repository. Okay. Uh, is this the web uh, the the desktop one? Now, is it that you want to uh, bring down a repository that you've got on already got on GitHub, or do you what? Uh, tell me the situation. What do you want to do? Yeah, because I've been creating mine on uh, on um, on the browser, uh, and I so 
and and you just said that when you make changes in the browser, it doesn't automatically uh, change in the in the desktop. Yeah. So I'm just thinking that perhaps it's better to just download my repository, the one that is on the browser, to my desktop, and then just continue working from the desktop instead of from the browser as I've been doing. Let me give you a short answer, and if we need to swing around at the end, we can. But the short answer is that you would want to, if, do you already have a local copy of your repository at all or no? No, no, because I wasn't using the desktop at all. Okay. I, I started the, the, the other way around, you see. Okay, short answer is, yeah. uh, I, is to clone the repository. Okay. And get it set up locally and that'll bring it down. That's the short answer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I do that from the browser. Uh, I, I would do it from GitHub Desktop, from personally. The there, there are a hundred ways to do it. You don't have to use the browser. You don't have to use the GitHub Desktop. You could use it from the command line. So uh, that's the way that I would do it. I would you do it from GitHub Desktop, and I'd clone repository. Okay. okay. We'll swing back around at the end if we have time. Uh, okay. I want to make sure we get through doing it the way that I've set up. There are a hundred ways. It can get complicated. That's why I, I wanted to do it in just one way for people that are just beginning. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. for this. It's okay, sorry. it's okay. We'll come back around to that. <clears throat> okay, so we, um, we've we clicked on the settings page of our repository and we've clicked on the pages page of our repository. Now this is a category of repository that's that's fairly new. By fairly new, I mean it's probably a couple of years old, but to me it still seems new. <clears throat> They've added some functionality like this. So when we get on the pages, we want to look at a couple of attributes. Um, one is we want to look at the source of our page here. Probably it says the source is is none, but you want to set it to source main. So just, just select main. And you may have to click save. Go on, Anna. Is your hand still up or is that a is that a new question or the old question? Okay. No, sorry, it was the old question. So. No problem. I just noticed it, so I, I thought so. I'd say it. So just select main. That's one of the things that you want to do. And hit save. Okay, now we have to give um, things a minute to uh, to go, but um, your URL is the uh, is the default is that it's a HTTP -T HTTPS, so it's a secure um, website, <clears throat> and the URL is the the words that comprise the name of your account. Dot github dot io. So I think mine is all up to date. And if I um, just load that up, I'm going to make a new tab here. So ha dash data dash science for me dot github dot io. And it's notice mine has the change from Ed Harris to Jack Nicholson. We'll make another change in a second, um, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Now, um, does anyone have have a problem with this? Because uh, if if the pages aren't public, we might need to set make that setting. And I want to make sure that we make that setting. I'll give everybody a second to do this. Ed, how did you get the the lock on on the web page? Because when I've worked with websites before, you have to pay to get the security once you've bought your domain name. I want to say it's some special skill, George, but uh, GitHub web pages are secure by default. You can take that off. It's no special skill. Is okay. your GitHub page not secure? No, no, it, it is. It is. But previously working with uh, websites, I've had to pay uh, to get the lock. You get a free security certificate through GitHub because you're only a subdomain of github.io. That's why. 
Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so I assume that everybody is either working on this or they um, have just been watching or that there's no problem. <laughs> People I are... could not find the place to change it to to disable the private. Ah, save the private. Let's look at that then. So if I could get you to um, settings, go back to settings. Yeah. Yeah. And manage access. Gonna, uh, manage access. In, oh, I see. Yeah. You're going to need to put in your password again. I'll put in my password here. Uh, I have to navigate to my password, which I haven't remembered. How do you get that? I don't get it. So okay. manager access, then it says who has access. Go to manage settings. Oh, so maybe you've already just put in your thing. Let me come to the same place you are. Give me just a moment. There we go. Manage access. Um, so um, now see over here who has access. It may say, what does it say there for you, Iona? It's private. Yeah. So see here where it says manage. Click on manage. Yeah. And, and this takes you down the end of a long page. Yeah. And I don't want to frighten you, Iona, but you're in the danger zone. That's what we're <laughs> looking at. It says danger zone. Yes. And what you want to do is um, you want to flout the danger zone and it, where it says change repository visibility, you want to change visibility. Yeah. And you should get something. Oh, make with, public. Make public, yeah. And it's yeah. going to ask you to type in that yeah. whole thing or you can just copy and paste in that thing that's bold right here. Yeah. It's going to ask you to type okay. in. So yeah. copy. I just copy and paste it. Yeah, I copied and pasted. Well, I'm just going to confirm that I want to make mine public. You would do the same. And it says visibility is already public, comma dummy implied for me, but it should be a green thing that said it's made public for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And so now we just we can just go to the name of your account dot github dot io and let's see if it's up there it is does anybody have a web page that they could show us that's been following along maybe i own a will in one second here uh, <laughs> um, strange i put it there it may, it may have, take a second it may take up to a minute or so for it to propagate it takes me to google page Okay, do you, does yours look exactly like mine with uh, HTTPS? Oh, yeah, the, I didn't put HTTPS. That's why. Colon, forward slash, forward slash. Sometimes, then, yeah. So what, what do we get? It says this cannot be reached. Okay, George has got one. George has got one. Iona. Um, do you want to share your screen and let's have a look? Uh, okay. Can you see? Yes. May I ask you to um, to go back to the GitHub repository where this lives? Uh, this one? No, not that one. <coughs> yeah. Um, can't even. Oh, this one. There we go. Oh, do you mean the desktop? This is the one. This is the one I'm interested oh, in. Yeah. Can I ask you to um, up in the upper left hand corner? There's a link that to um, above that. And click on the left hand link that's I Y Wang. Ah, uh, this one. Yep. That's your account homepage. 
I now see. can and now click on the repositories tab that has the number one by it. It's up to nope up at the very top repositories. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, there you go. And now click on that. Yes. <clears throat> what I see here is yeah. that, that there's no HTML file in there. <laughs> so uh, if you go back to your local if you go back to your local copy of that, go back to the folder, or or if you have it open in RStudio, go to RStudio. Um, I didn't know how to do that in RStudio. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, well, what you could do then yeah. is you could copy this HTML pot file and copy it to the GitHub watched file. You mean this one or that one? The HTML file that you just had, just copy it. This one? Yep. OK, copy. And then double click open the folder called ihuang.github.io. Yeah. And paste it in there. Now go back to your GitHub desktop. Yeah. Do you see up there how it says one changed file? Yeah. Go ahead and put um, down in your summary. Uh, summary. It's, it's the summary. It's the the skinny field that says create index.html. Yeah. Yeah. Just put change 01 or something like that. Any little summary. You mean here? Yep. And go ahead and put commit to main. And uh, now there's that button that's just popped up, push origin. OK. So that's going to push up the HTML file. OK. Still, still working. It's it's doing refreshing. some refreshing. It's refreshing. OK, now let's go back to your web browser, to your account. And um, can I get you to just reload this page? Yeah, you can do it this way. Hit repositories. <clears throat> Still. Now, now you've got your in HTML in there. <laughs> It's a change just one minute ago. So now if you go back, just click that next tab yeah. where you've got your web page. Not the, not the HTML file. We want to go to the URL that's your web page. I think you have it open in the tab just to the right of this. Uh, this one? It's a tab in your web browser just to the right of the one that's open right now on the yeah. upper. Nope. Yeah. Nope. There's a tab. <laughs> <laughs> you have oh, a lot this of, one. You, you have, yes, this one. Now just click refresh. Oh, I see. Slight, hmm. Okay, still having a little problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Strange. Sorry, Ed. Yes. Uh, just on, on that tab, I think the URL is actually incorrect. If you go back to that tab and. Okay. You, That's what I need is a pair of young eyes. Joe, you need to be at my side at all times. <laughs> So if you delete off the first um, section of the text before the first forward slash. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Uh, and include that forward slash. So delete one of those forward slashes. Ah, so like this one. Yeah. yeah. Right, you are, Joe. There we go. Yes. Now. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you, Joe. <laughs> We did need to also upload that HTML file, but I didn't notice the URL was off. Thank you. <laughs> OK, now I want to do one other thing. I'm going to take the screen back from my own and now, if I may. Ah, uh, yes. Let me. We're just out of time, but we have actually enough time to do one other thing. <clears throat> Is that I'm just going to go back to my GitHub desktop and show that um, there are no changes, and I'm just going to go and, and look 
in the folder that's being watched by GitHub Desktop, just like you have. And in the files folder, I've still got that text file. I've still got the images. Now, notice there are two images in here. So when you go to edit your um, your document, I'm back in R Studio. I've got the index dot markdown. Now, now that we've gone through the harangue of, of having GitHub Desktop setting up a repository like this, the only place we're ever going to edit is in our repository that GitHub Desktop is watching. This is the beauty of GitHub, and it's all set up right now if you follow it along. I've already put a second image in here called Jack2. And this is the markdown that, that points to Jack1. If you want to edit the text, you can just copy and paste your own research text over this paragraph. You can delete or add links to, uh, to other. You can build a large website with more web pages using Markdown in this fashion. But the simple change I'm going to do right now is just to change the picture. If you have your own picture, copy your own picture into that IMG folder. Just to illustrate it for everybody else who isn't following along, I'm just going to change this to Jack2. And I'm going to save it. Now remember, we have to compile the HTML because that's what's being displayed on GitHub. So I'm just going to hit the preview to compile the HTML. What I should see, this is a um, the new picture, what it should look like. This is just my local HTML file that's being displayed by our studio. I'm going to close that. Go back to my GitHub desktop, I get two changes. I've changed that text to from Jack to Jack2, and the HTML is the same thing. It the picture has actually changed and it shows just the um, hexadecimal code <laughs> for that change, which isn't really helpful to us. So I'm just going to commit that. <clears throat> And then I'm going to push it. This is so satisfying. It is so fun to use GitHub Desktop. It is, it's almost as good as RStudio. Now, this is my web page on, um, on uh, GitHub. I'm just going to go to my repository. And just I'm just going to confirm that the changes were uploaded 29 seconds ago, so they have been. Then I'm just going to go to my web page. And I'm just going to click refresh. Bam. It's just that easy to customize your web page. And you actually can build these days. I've, I've learned this is a change that I didn't really know about it, but you can build quite a sophisticated local free web page and you can you can actually um, pay to have your own custom URL if you wish through GitHub and it's pretty cheap if you want to do that too but there's no reason to do that really you could just have a free one as a professional website with your CV an account of your research projects and have it out there when you apply for those jobs are there are there any questions here because we are out of time I just have one. Do you have like an example of, I know we've got your example, um, but is there any others of like really good web pages made through GitHub? Um, <laughs> the, a good way to do it is to, you can go to almost any GitHub page. I, I can show you one of my favorite. Well, uh, let's see what this guy has. I'll show you one that I like. Hold on. I saw it earlier. It was a good one. <clears throat> Should have uh, I should have um, done one, but uh, this one that I'm showing right now is one that I like. And let me go to the um, the main web page of this guy. This I like this because it's so simple. This guy's whole website is he's got a blog for posts, and these are the posts. He's got a little bit of information about him. 
I don't. I actually don't agree with this guy's uh, views on academics or anything. But he has some pretty useful blog posts for something I'm interested in at the moment. So I, I've been using it. He has a CV up, just a file linked to a PDF of his um, CV, and you can kind of see how he set this up by just going to his website. And the way we get to that is we just copy his GitHub name, copy. Um, I, I think first I'll copy his whole um, website in there so people can visit it themselves. But the way we get to his GitHub repositories is just to type his, uh, take his name, go to github.com forward slash his name. <clears throat> and we get his uh, all of his repositories. Now I I think I did. Oh, and he's got a link down here. You see on his web page to his um, to his GitHub website. <laughs> so this is one I like. That's very simple. Go on, Iona. I see you have your hand up. <laughs> How did you get? Um... You know the the scripts that you put into the R Studio. Where do I copy that? The um, you mean this Markdown script? Yes. I saw when you um, if you would just share your screen with me, I'll relinquish the screen real quick. Do you Sorry. have R Studio uh, installed on your computer? Yes, and I've just opened it so that you can see on the screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the one that you've opened, notice, is called readme.markdown.md, but the one you want to open is called index.md. So okay, ahead. so if I go to Not me, open uh, file. Open file, yeah. The index. Not, uh, you need the markdown file in there. Uh, so copy it, it over, copy the markdown file into your GitHub folder as well. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so I need to first of all do that. Um, so copy this one. Oh, it's there. Oh, no, no, that's not index. Yeah. Okay. Now open that one with GitHub. I mean with R Studio. Okay. This one. The the index. I see. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be named that by default. I think there are ways around this, but it's easiest. And then you can just edit the uh, text and. Yeah. You'll have to copy your own picture of your own smiling face in there, not crazy Jack Nicholson <laughs> or cool motorcycle riding Jack Nicholson. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Guys. That's one. Qu uh, another question. Sorry. For okay. the web page, is there any way to grab information from the website and then that web page becomes a kind of a database? Um, yes, is the short answer. You, uh, I don't know what you mean, what kind of information you have in mind, but uh, you can upload data files, scripts of analyses, uh, images, reports, PDFs, Word documents. You can upload anything you want. It just ex it functions exactly like a um, a website. Uh, if I want to create um a database or, or questionnaire for people to complete and link into then, then a database in my own uh, repository that I could actually see the answers. Yeah. The short answer is yes, you could do that with Java, JavaScript, or some kind of packaged thing that you installed. Yeah. But, but I haven't done that, and I think that's pretty complicated to do on a free GitHub website. But I may be wrong. There may be some easy tools out there. Joe, do you know anything like that for automated data capture from questionnaires? Yeah, off the top of my head, I think um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's either called Form Spree or Form Spring, and you can build that right into your um, your GitHub website, and it will um, basically capture the data and send it to your 
uh, email, but it also um, send a copy to your GitHub, which you then have to pull down um, through a pull request to uh, incorporate it into your local um, your local <coughs> files. Mm. But we yeah. can talk about no, that in great. more detail if you want, Iona, at some point. It's, okay. it's, pretty, it's pretty pretty hardcore stuff. It's quite complicated. I, I would love That's... to see that in action. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Any 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 comments on that? Um, any questions? That's very Joe? helpful. Thank you. Joe, I know Joe likes uh, this kind of stuff. Um, what are the cool kids doing with their GitHub websites these days? Is there anything to say here to close things off? If I'm totally honest, I don't actually use GitHub pages. <laughs> I use uh, Blogdown or Distill and Netlify. So actually, this is a bit of a uh, a bit interesting for me to see how it's done this way. They this thing that they have now with uh, GitHub Pages is is new as far as I can tell, and it creates a category of a repository that becomes a web page. I I think it might be true. I knew there was a time where you could only have exactly one that was the same name as your, but it looks to me like you could have more than one. I haven't I haven't tried to do that yet. Yeah. One of one of my favorite web pages which is quite a good web page is um just a github one that is the um the rafa lab the data science stats lab from um from harvard uh, he uses the book down kind of website so he's got a book down rafa lab .github .io, and it, it's he's installed book down to make a a whole data science um, book. I like this book and I'm tempted to use it for teaching, but it's um, polluted by the tidyverse. So, <laughs> but this is a great website. It's a great website. It's very useful too for uh, self teaching. Could you drop the link to that in the chat, please, Ed? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. This guy is, uh, he's, he's like a biostats god. And this is like his teaching website, but his um, his GitHub repositories are pretty hardcore and high level research stuff. So it might be something of interest, very, very focused on human medical stats. Any other comments? That's all I've got, guys. That was fun. That's the easiest way to make a website. What I would like is for people to work on this in the next week and maybe I'll invite people to drop a link with their custom paragraph and a picture of their research. I would love actually to see that. What I want to do next week, I think I did send it out, is we're going to launch a work along with the boot camp. Um, and next week, I'm just going to give an introduction to the boot camp and how it will work and basically assign some homework for the following week. So um, what I would like to say is that if you if you have if you know new PhD students, especially that aren't attending or may be interested, but especially if you have supervisors, that you think may be interested in in learning our stats, it would be a probably the easiest way that they could slip into it, uh, even if they just passively watch and attend or just be made aware of the resources. Anybody, um, someone mentioned that people outside of Harper, there are a few attendees from outside of Harper, even here today, as a matter of fact, more than welcome. And if they want to be added to the list, if you just send me an email or have them email me, I'll add them straight to the list. Anybody is is welcome. I'll see you guys later. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ed. Um, thanks. Hey, guys. Can I ask you one more question? Yeah, sure. Um, do, I, do you have any plans to teach on how to do web crawling? Um, you know, so if there are updated research and I wanted to be able to capture that, so keep basically, if I have a search string on Google Scholar and or whatever, and then it will automatically be captured uh, by whatever the um, software. I don't know whether you you are like aware there are of it. citations for a database or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there must be some solution for that in R. I'm open to that. Joe, do you know of anything? Yeah, there's lots of op uh, options available for web crawling. Um, I'll have a dig around and see what I can find for you, Iona. Mm, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, web, 
I, I might call that web scraping or something like that for like for um, doing systematic or completely objective searches or yeah, just mm -hmm. updating for. I can barely keep up with the research. I need someone else to read it for me and tell me what what the interesting <laughs> stuff. Maybe Twitter, that's but I right. get, I get distracted with memes on Twitter, so that's <laughs> also no good for me. All right. Um, Great. Got Thank you ever so pleasure. much. Pleasure. See everyone later. Bye. See ya.